Welcome to the Nature Here TV show. Today we have with us Zuriel Rasmussen, who's going to be talking to us about the Portland Urban Coyote Project. Zuriel, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I grew up in Eastern Oregon, rural Eastern Oregon, until I was 12, um, and then I moved to the Bay Area. And I've always been really interested in canids. When I was little, I loved dogs. I learned all the dog breeds and um, saw coyotes in Eastern Oregon. And after I graduated from uh, undergrad with a degree in psychology, I came up here and I saw a coyote crossing my path um, on my way home from work. And I was and that just was like, it. You were like, I was, hey, ding, I, there's the coyote. Well, yeah, I was really amazed because I was used to seeing coyotes in a rural context. And this was right in southwest Portland. Um, and so I was really, really interested in how a coyote could live in such an urban environment and so i got really interested in urban coyotes that would, that and would that, totally make yeah. sense. yeah <laughs> nice and so personally you believe in this project because you just saw it or just is there something that struck it outside of that or you know how did you like dig a little bit deeper into it i think what happened is that i i saw that coyote and this kind of spurred a lot of independent research on my part i started learning about how coyotes live in cities and how there is some conflict where people you know there are a lot of different opinions about coyotes and um so I really wanted to understand how to better provide information for people and help prevent conflict. Um, yeah. Good. So if, like, if we're just, I know there's a lot to the subject, so I don't want to like take too much time on it, but if there's one thing that really attracted you more than it, was it just the fact that it was in like a neighborhood that really got you and you're like, that's really interesting. Or was it more because of, of the animal side of it or what, or maybe both? I don't, I mean, I don't. I think that I was just really amazed that such a relatively large animal can live in a city and go unnoticed most of the time. There's some because people... it looks domesticated? Because I look at a coyote and think, oh, it almost <laughs> yeah. looks like, I know it's not a dog, but I mean, it looks totally. like one. So I think part of it is that people might not notice a coyote when they're driving down the road or walking. Right. They might think, yeah, it's just a, they kind of look like a German shepherd, although they're a lot smaller. Um, and also coyotes are just naturally fearful. So they So they're skittish anyway. To, yeah, they tend to stay out okay. of sight. They even in rural areas they have a reputation for being an animal that is really hard to track, really hard to find. They really stay out of sight. Okay. So tell me so about the project yeah. that you're doing. So let's we'll just dive right into it. Tell me you know, I don't know anything about it, so I'm just, I'm like everybody else, I'm just kind of learning totally, as we go. Yeah. Um, so the Portland Urban Coyote Project started at Portland State uh, in 2010 by a graduate student named Jenny Grant and her advisor, Barbara Brower. Um, and it really started as a response to coyote sightings in Portland. Um, in the Alameda neighborhood, there was a coyote that people were seeing during the day and really had a lot of questions about it. Were they scared um, of it, do you think? It depends. There's okay. really this large spectrum okay. of how people feel about coyotes, which is fascinating um, and something that we're looking at in our project. But people, some people are very fearful of coyotes. Some people are love coyotes and um, even try to attract them by feeding them, oh. which is definitely not, not something that you want to do. do. Not yeah, feed don't the animals. don't feed the coyotes. <laughs> um, and some people don't really know coyotes live in the city or are pretty neutral and don't really care. Um, but the project started by in this neighborhood um, and Jenny Grant wanted to track where coyotes were and so asked people to start reporting their sightings mm -hmm. online. Um, and from there, it's sort of grown into something that a lot more people know about. Um, we've added an interactive map so people can see where coyotes have been So spotted. people can physically go on to yeah. a website and see this. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So okay. people go onto the website and they report sightings. Um, so if you've seen a coyote in Portland, you can go to the website, um, which is portlandcoyote.com, and report um, where you saw the coyote and what it was doing. Uh, and then we put it onto our interactive sightings map so that people can check so out how many people see. yeah, have seen that the coyotes. Okay. And, and what we learned from that is not only where coyotes are in the city and more about their ecology, but also how people are interacting with coyotes, um, what kind of experiences they're having. We haven't, there's not, there's not been any attacks or anything like that. Are they pretty, because you said they're, they're afraid of you. So I would, yeah. I would assume they wouldn't approach because I think of, well, children, if you're in a neighborhood, Alameda, that's a nice neighborhood. Yeah. And I would think smaller children would be at risk, but if they're afraid or timid and they only come out at night, then that's probably not 
It tends to not be an issue. So typically coyotes are not dangerous. They are very wary of humans and they mostly stay out of the way. They've actually changed their whole um, cycle. So they're out at night in cities because people aren't there. Um, but occasionally a coyote can become habituated, get used to being around people. And that's really when you start to see um, potential conflict. I see right. Yeah, where then the coyote isn't as scared and can start to act a little more aggressively. Um, and so that's a really big piece of our project where we want to help uh, limit the possibility of habituation by providing education. Because the best way to keep a coyote from being habituated or for to help reinstill its natural fear of humans is to haze it, is what we call it. Mm -hmm. um, where that means anything like yelling, making really loud noise, um, Which typically be filling. scared off, it doesn't like it. So it's thinking humans are yeah. loud, obnoxious people. Right, I am not, I don't want to, yeah. If we, yeah, it's the opposite of feeding a coyote, right? Okay, we want right. to train them, retrain them to be, um, you know, their natural wary selves. Okay, so they've got their little yeah. kind of world and we've got ours and let's exactly. not mix the two. Yeah. Gotcha. Are coyotes basically just in the Portland area? I mean, you mentioned a specific neighborhood. Um, or do they go outside of that? Or I, mean, I would, I would think of the coyote. I would think like boring or something. Great, yeah. <laughs> you know, something where there's a large vast area yeah. of land. I wouldn't think homes. I just, I don't. Why? I don't understand why they would be there. I mean, totally. So coyotes originated in the Southwest United States. They're a sort of prairie desert animal originally, um, and they are one of the most successful carnivores in that they've expanded their range almost two times or about two times. Oh, wow. So they've gone from the Southwest to all across North America, up to Alaska, and all the way down to Central. America. So this is a, a very so adaptive one, animal. Yeah, they can kind yeah. of go anywhere. They don't stick to one specific Yeah, area. they're they're pretty amazing. So they're, they're very, very opportunistic. They can learn, you know, they change their patterns of when they hunt. They can learn to eat different kinds of food. Um, and so we've really seen them in metropolitan areas or, ur you know, suburban and urban areas in the last 30 years, a lot more. Um, and do you know why they're coming? It's not totally clear. I think a big part of it is just their opportunistic nature. Okay, so, so they are- Opportunity where there's homes and people yeah, and food and garbage cans. It I, tends I mean, to be a pretty good assuming. place for them to live. Um, a lot of people think that a large part of their diet is anthropogenic food, food from human sources like garbage or uh, domesticated animals. But actually most of the diet studies um, show that that's, that. yeah, it's not, not that what much. They like. Okay. Um, like about one to two percent of a coyote's diet could be domestic cat. That's what studies have kind of found, or even less than that. Um, and no more than 35 percent, sort of like garbage, domesticated fruit, that kind of thing. Um, so mostly, even in cities, they're living off of rodents um, and rabbits. Okay, so people aren't feeling like their own dog or their own cat's really at risk. Well, even though they don't eat uh, domesticated animals very much, a really big it's challenge be with coyotes is that people really fear for their domesticated animals. Um, and rightly so, coyotes will eat a cat or a small dog. Um, and so what we recommend is that really the best thing to do is to keep your cats indoors um, and supervise small dogs um, because that is the main source of conflict between humans and coyotes is that challenge um, of balancing this carnivore in an urban area. Do you feel like there's getting to be a lot more coyotes in the area? I mean, are they growing like in, in packs? I, I mean, I don't know. Do they come in packs? Is that how they live? Yeah, would? so okay. they live in family group packs kind of structure. There's usually a male and female pair that are breeding and then a few adult offspring. And so they live in a pack, um, but they hunt generally alone Separately. or in like really loose pairs. Uh, and so that's why you never really would see, see a more coyote than one pack. at a time. Yeah. Right, okay. but it's they, not like you're seeing a bunch of them trancing down the road and you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, hey, there goes a bunch of coyotes. Yeah. Not like wolves. They don't like, yeah, they <laughs> totally don't do different. That. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, but they, what, what else did you? Well, it was Sorry. just more like, are they in large goofs, you know, do they come? And how do you control, because you obviously we can't control on how many offspring they have. So how do you kind of, where do you think the balance of that lies? How do you keep them from being overwhelming? 
they amount of them they will naturally oh yeah because you're asking kind of has this population grown right um, I mean really like the landscape can only support so many coyotes they're intensely territorial animals okay. and so they'll so have home they, they ranges. zone out their own yeah areas. Okay, exactly. so that kind of keeps them down more to a minimum yeah. instead of them, like a rabbit where they just right, got, right. Know, like hundreds of thousands of them and nobody cares yeah so. exactly it's unlikely that we'd have be overrun with coyotes it's not totally clear if we're seeing an increase in coyotes here in portland um i personally doubt it i think that the population has probably stayed about the same so pretty um, stable it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like it's going up or yeah you know they're, they're not becoming endangered they're just kind of yeah just, Really they're sort of successfully okay, living. doing well they're yeah. surviving and yeah um and they i think some people uh, we see this sort of pattern of coyotes in a particular neighborhood um all of a sudden we'll get a lot of reports from that neighborhood and people will say oh there are coyotes here all of a sudden we have this coyote pop influx and what we think is probably that has more to do with a few coyotes that are all of a sudden you know, maybe a little more habituated, being seen by more people, or the neighborhood is more aware of the fact that there are coyotes. And so people notice the coyotes more. Right, so they start going um, door to door saying, hey, I saw a coyote, and then pretty soon the next neighbor's going, hey, I saw one too. Yeah. And then it's just someone else, and everybody's seeing coyotes. Yes, yeah, gotcha. exactly. Gotcha. So yeah, it's not, it's not totally clear. Even if you're in your neighborhood and you feel like, oh my gosh, I've lived here for 10 years and I've never, never seen, seen coyote. coyotes, and now they're everywhere, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's been a change in where the coyotes live in the city. Do you feel like it's a conflict with Portland? Like, do you feel like it's an issue? Like, Portland's feeling like, because, I mean, you're doing a study now on it, and if they've got websites and things, are you feeling like it's, it's becoming more of an issue, or are you just trying to make people more aware that the issue is there? I think that our goal is to help mitigate any conflict. So I think that it's, you know, coyotes have lived here for a long time, and I think there are some people that are fearful. And we want to, especially for those people, provide education um, to help prevent future conflict. You know, as as coyotes become more opportunistic, you know, and, become, and potentially become more habituated, it'll be even more important to, for us to let people know that feeding coyotes is never a good idea, that when you see them, it's, it's a good idea to help reinstall their fear yeah, by you training them. you do your them. thing, yeah. I'll do mine. <laughs> yeah. So you um, feel like you're an advocate for them? Um, I think that I am really fascinated by how coyotes live in the city, and I wanna figure out the best way to manage coyote populations and, and make population. sure people are safe. And so right now what research shows is that the best thing to do is to use these hazing tactics, you know, and coexist with coyotes in a way that it's is healthy for everyone. Yeah, it's healthy for exactly. them and it's healthy for us. And then everybody yeah. kind of, so yeah. obviously information is the best. Yes, exactly. And it's, you know, it's really our most powerful management tool. It, removing coyotes is really not feasible right. and doesn't even necessarily work. Need to be done. Um, like if you remove coyotes, there's some suggestion that they it might even over reproduce, like to fill that gap. Because right, they panic and think, yeah. oh, we're running out of species, so let's well, and more. Like other coyotes that were solitary can come in and reproduce and they might and they have this sort of adaptive reproduction where they might reproduce more pups for a couple of years to fill in that gap. Are there different types of coyotes? Or is it like one breed, you know, like a dog, there's a ton of <laughs> breeds, are there, is, are coyotes the same thing? Or like in, you know, people speak different languages but live in the same community right. kind of thing. Is it is it similar Great to that? Great question. Um, so there are subspecies of coyotes, lots and lots of subspecies, but the main distinction in coyotes is that there are Western coyotes and Eastern coyotes. And Western coyotes are what we have here, as I'm sure you'd guess. Um, and they're, they tend to be a little smaller. So they're, so that's probably generally, beneficial to us. Yeah, generally <laughs> 20 to 40 pounds, okay. um, whereas eastern coyotes can be 50 bit, pounds, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Great. I was going to have you look at your website just a yeah. little bit so we can kind of get a little interactive sure. going on it, just so people kind of understand. And this is going to show just a specific area? Yeah, so I can just show you the basic sighting map that we... Um, you, we take everyone's sightings and put them okay. on this map. So this is what people have come to you and said, hey, I've seen kind yes. of my areas, and then you put a little pin on it and you kind of ping it. Exactly. Okay. So this is all because people have been um, great citizen scientists and shared their sightings. None of these sightings are coming from, from my team. Got it. Got um, it. And so this is the Portland metropolitan area, and 
the sightings are split up into morning sightings, afternoon sightings, and night sightings. And it's color coded, I would so imagine. That you, yeah, you can okay. start to get an idea. So yellow is the morning, blue is afternoon, and the dark purple is night. Um, and so you can start to see this is just sightings so that have been I'm reported. Blue is more prominent than the other colors. Um, does it does it give like a percentage? Like let's say people see them more in the morning or more in the afternoon or more at night. So far, we're not seeing. We haven't. Oh, night is yeah blue. okay we haven't delved super deeply into those kind of um, analytics although that's the sort of next step. next step um, but so far we're not seeing huge trends although I'd say that I think morning and night as we would expect are are more represented than afternoon sightings and that's in line with what we know about coyotes they tend do to do they stay up at night yeah, they try to so avoid they sleep people. The day. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, are they mm -hmm. nocturnal and they just in urban areas? It's really okay. interesting, because but not in the wild. They're not in rural areas. They're more crepuscular, so usually dawn and dusk. But also, they will be out during the day, so they can be diurnal if they need to. Um, but in rural areas, sorry, in urban areas, we really see them change that behavior, and that's part so of what they makes adapt. Them they're successful. adapting to us. So as much yeah. as we're adapting to them, they're also doing the same thing. Oh yeah, and really amazingly, they really they, you know, they take up. In a lot of studies, they've found that urban coyotes, you know, live in the little natural areas in cities, um, golf courses, cemeteries. They, they find the places that we aren't, and they also are awake when we aren't. Um, and that's how they've sort of slipped into cities and made a living here. Okay. And when you go, not to go back to the website again, but just, so does the website also talk about the species itself and kind of give them things of the do's and the don'ts? Yeah. And, you know, besides just the sightings, obviously the sightings are important because that gives them an idea. They can say, hey, I've seen it in my neighbor. Who else has yeah. kind of thing? Um, so we also have a tutorial that we've been working on. So this is just the front page of the tutorial. Um, and it's sort of a click through tutorial that gives basic life history of coyotes. So, you know, when are they having pups? How big are they? That kind of thing. Um, it also talks about coyotes specifically in Portland. So shares some photos that citizen scientists have shared with us um, and the map. And then it has information about how to spot a coyote. So mm -hmm. like, what does the general silhouette of a coyote look like? Right, so you can tell the difference between someone and someone's domestic exactly. dog if you're confused, because they do look like German Shepherds and For they've sure. got that kind of that coloring to them. They definitely do. Do they ever abandon their pups? Do that like if some, does anybody run across like a litter and something happened to the parents and then you've got a litter um, I imagine that's not something that I've heard of happening in Portland, okay. although I'm not sure. Um, but I'm, you know, in some cases, I bet that there are situations where, you know, the like, coyotes in cities are most commonly killed by cars. cars. <laughs> um, and so that could absolutely happen. I just saw an article about a coyote being saved from a storm drain, um, but it wasn't here in Portland. I don't remember where it was. Um, a coyote pup. So. Okay. So but I, I just wasn't sure, like, if someone ran across them, what, I don't know if they should necessarily approach a pup either, but, I mean, if it was something where they would call the Humane Society or somebody to come yeah. in, if they saw, I mean, if you don't see the parents around and you see puppies. I'd call the Audubon Society. Okay, We're so partnered the with them, okay. and they do a really good job of handling of taking that care kind of, of anything thing. that needs yeah. to be. Um, but, yeah, that's not something uh, that is it's not super very common. common. Okay. Um, so if it did, it's pretty good. rare that yeah. it happens. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't want to have to, but I mean, just in case situation occurred, so someone would know that the Audubon Society is something that they're familiar with the situation. They know what to do with them, that yeah, kind of thing. Definitely. Okay. How many people are involved in this program that you're working with? Is it a very large amount of scientists or? So right now it's um, my advisor. I'm a PhD student at PSU. Um, and so my advisor, Barbara Brower, has been on the project for the whole time that it's existed. Um, and Jenny Grant is another researcher. I'm doing most of the main sort of research right now and moving forward into more analysis of the sightings. Um, but we also have had help from volunteers. So we've had a number of undergraduates that are really about super it. helpful and there's, I there's just have there. to give a shout out to them because like they're they've done a really great job coding some of the right. data. Well if they're excited and they're passionate about you know then that makes sense to something that they want to do. Do you yeah. know the approximate number of coyotes that are in the Portland area? I don't. The only thing that we can really do is estimate that based on other est study estimates. It's a pretty hard thing to estimate. Um, can you track any of them? Can you, like, I don't know, put a tracker on them like they do other things yeah, in the wild? And that's I see people do that. That we would love to do to start to understand specifically in Portland, you know, how 
where, where is a particular coyote going? How big is its home range? What's it, what is it eating? You know, doing some scat analysis. Um, and as far as how many coyotes, I sort of using estimates from a Chicago study, um, I've estimated that there could be as many as 1,500 coyotes in the Portland metropolitan area based on the density of coyotes in this other study. Um, but it's really hard to tell because there are such regional differences and geographic differences. Right. Do you get any government help for the program or assistance like grants or anything like that? Because I, I, I know that with scientists, yeah. grants are important. <laughs> it is important. Um, so. We are partnered with Audubon, the Audubon Society. That's our main partnership. And I am um, an Eiger Fellow in the National Science Foundation program. So I'm personally supported um, by Through that them. and the gotcha. Institute of Sustainable Solutions at Portland State. Um, but the project itself is mostly just this partnership between Portland State and Audubon. And that, how, so on an average, how often do you say people call you up or say, hey, we've got a coyote. I mean, is it on a daily? Is it on a weekly? Is it on a monthly? I mean, I don't, I've never seen a coyote in my neighborhood, so I can't say that I would ever, you know. Yes. Yeah. You know. Um, we, it depends on the season. So fall is a super okay, so busy time for us. Okay, so it can be a seasonal us. thing. Okay. Um, but we definitely got, get a lot of contact, and that's growing, and that's great. Um, we really like to get that is... contact. Um, but mostly by email. So we'll receive, you know, five, um, even 10 emails a week and we receive re citing reports almost every day sometimes 10 15 okay so sightings. it's not like you're it's not like oh hey six months ago somebody said they said coyote, yeah but it's, it's a daily that's yes, that's yeah. pretty in, i mean that's that's a lot we're I mean, really happy that people are that engaged because we know there are a lot of coyotes um out there but getting you know having a coyote a person and a person that's aware of the project is what we need for a sighting to make it right yeah to make it and work. so it's really great that the project has really grown in the last couple of years nice what would be your like the your most favorite part about it like is it collecting the data is it just the fact that we're talking about the coyotes itself is it the interesting fact that they're in a suburban area which to me is, yeah. I, I just, I, I would think that they wouldn't want to be, yeah. but you know. Yeah, I think that that part, there's sort of a really amazing adaptability that they can live. And, you know, I'm walking through Southeast Portland thinking, I know there are coyotes like, right around the here. corner. Yeah, Come out. <laughs> um, but you know, they're somehow making this amazing living here in the city. Um, I think that's really amazing. And I also just really like interacting with lots of people and hearing about the different Stories experiences they've and had and they've the had. different opinions. Cause that's something that really, you know, is coyotes are pretty controversial. They have a controversial history in rural areas and some of that comes over into urban areas too. And so understanding lots of different perspectives, people, some people really do, aren't comfortable with the idea that coyotes live in the city and, right. and like, worry about their pets, here. you know? Right, well, um, pets are like children anymore. Yeah. So I, I understand the dynamics of that, sure. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I mean, I have a cat, <laughs> right. I, I get it. Um, right. But I think I, I just really like um, talking to a lot of different people about that and sort of trying to figure out what the best solutions are. You For know? them. Yeah. Yeah. So do you feel like you have any, I don't know, it's a negative feedback because at some point, but do you have some people that are just really like, I want the coyotes, you know, out, they shouldn't be here. This is where we live. They're, I mean, do you have people that are just, you know, and, you know, I live in a prominent neighborhood and I would like to keep, be able to let my animal out in the backyard and not have to yeah. worry about it. I mean, do you have people that are really kind of. Definitely. Absolutely. That's yeah. um, for sure part of the feedback that we get. People are really passionate and some people really don't believe that coyotes have a place in the city. Um, and my response to that would be that we really, uh, you know, regardless of your sort of personal opinions toward coyotes, it's really challenging um, to come up with a solution that works better than this sort of coexistence plan. Coyotes are so adaptive and when you remove them more come in. Yeah they're not going to go anywhere yeah. so it's not like you can say okay we're going to take this coyote and it's it's pack out and they're never going to come back because that's yeah. not probably what's going to happen. Yeah. It's not realistic. And so figuring out how to make it a more peaceful relationship you know um, asking people to be aware of the risks of having their pet outside um, in an area where there are coyotes is part of that. Have you personally gone to any other areas and seen other coyote, I don't know, just like what you do like that? I mean, there are other groups of people that do different sections and they, they track them and they, 
Yeah. You know, I mean, Seattle's fairly close to us. You know, is it the same thing? Is it, do they have similar issues like that or problems? Yeah, so as far as we can tell, I haven't gone to any of these projects, but I've been in touch with a few and mm -hmm. we plan to sort of connect more um, in the next year or so. But there are a lot of projects. Up in Canada, there's a citizen science project that has some similarities to this one in Edmonton. Um, in Denver, Colorado, there's one. And in Madison, Wisconsin as okay, well. Okay, so those are pretty spread yeah. out. So the, the demographics for that is, I mean, that's out there, that's pretty wide. Definitely, and it's definitely something that, um, it's pretty universal across North America, the kinds of conflicts, the kinds of challenges of managing coyotes in these really disparate landscapes. People are still running into the same kinds of issues, you know, a, a habituated coyote that just needs to be like retrained or, or you know, people being concerned about their cats or people being really excited about coyotes and they're in like, their hey, yard, coyotes in we just want feeding to them. Yeah, them. <laughs> yeah. They're so cute. Mm -hmm. and, right, I mean, I would imagine because the spectrum is so big that to be able to you know, deal with people that are really not happy about it, the people that are really excited about it and kind of get it like a happy medium where everybody just kind of yeah. coexist is a great word because that's really, yeah. you know, what everybody needs to do. If there's one thing that you'd say is the most important thing that you'd like to portray to people about like coyotes, what, is there anything in specific that you'd be like, this, if, if all else failed, this is the one thing? I think that just to keep in mind that typically coyotes are not dangerous, but it's important to, you know, haze them, reinstill fear in them, and, and to not engage in behaviors like feeding them. Um, because a coyote, a habituated coyote, is not a coyote that can live successfully in the city. Okay, so when I hear the word hazing, to me I'm thinking, oh, that kind of sounds like a mean thing to do. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just you know, uh -huh. speaking personally. You know, when you're talking hazing, you're not talking hurting the animal. You're just talking to shoo them away. Yeah, let them shake know a that, coffee can full of rocks. Yeah, just yell at it. It's really some, doing the coyote favor. So it's a, a noisy favor. thing yeah. more than anything. Okay, yeah, so for just sure. making sure that they're aware that yeah. you know that you're there and you're on their space and they don't want you there. For sure, it really helps the coyote. It helps keep it safe. It helps make it so that it doesn't need to be removed from the city. So if you love coyotes, you know, clap your hands really loud when <laughs> you like, see yeah, one. You're here. Um, and yeah, <laughs> you can tell the people that don't really yeah. like and be like, yeah, you're going away to kind of help them. You know, yeah, get out exactly. Of the <laughs> Either way. Okay. Well, the dynamics are just so broad because I can see people that love animals and, and are excited about the people that don't and really like their home animals and are not excited yeah. about it. Yeah. And to kind of make them, you know, blend. Yeah, sort of say. that's definitely our goal. And I think education is a big part I, of that. I agree. Ed education is my best. <laughs> I'm glad you guys, the website is again? PortlandCoyote.com. Okay, PortlandCoyote.com. And so if anybody, has their phone numbers on there as well that you can contact? Yeah, or and if you they can, wanted to call someone or yeah. personally talk to someone, sometimes people do better that way. Yeah, the best way to contact us is by email, okay. which is PortlandCoyote at gmail.com. Okay. Um, and that'll get you pretty much directly to me. Um, and then we can take it And then they can there. take it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming and sharing this it with us. I didn't know that you. coyotes were in the Portland metro. To be honest, I'm not gonna, I'm one of those people. That's great. And it's you know it's interesting to know that, and hopefully that this will kind of help make people more aware of the situation yeah. and just you know understanding that to coexist is really an important part. Thank so, you so thank much you, for thank having you. me. Thank you for watching the Engineer Here TV show. We'll see you again another time. Thank you.